Hey guys, so one of you guys wanted to see how we would actually send an email with register or register resolver. So I thought, why not? Let's do it. It doesn't take that long. It's pretty easy. So I'm going to be showing you in this video how to actually send an email and send it with the um, link. That way they can actually click on it and confirm their email. Now for this, I'm going to be using something called Spark Post. Uh, the reason I'm picking this thing is just because it's um, easy. I can use it with any email and um, they don't restrict you for the free version. So I'm just using the free version of this. Didn't have to put my credit card in or anything and they have a nice API and whatnot. So I'll be using this to actually send the email but if you guys wanna use a different one, you can. It's pretty much just up to you. Now I've done a few things already um, to get this set up. You need an API key to actually send this um, to them or send it to, uh, an email. So I have set up the API key in a file called .env. And then I also, in my package.json, I added a new library called .env um, right here. And uh, what that does, um, here's the readme for it. It's really nice. It'll go ahead and automatically read the uh, .env file and load it into the process so we can use these things. So this is what my file looks like. And I have one that says spark post underscore key or a underscore API underscore key. So I'm going to be using that. Um, so if you want to follow along, go ahead and create an account on spark post. I've already done so. Um, grab that API key, create a dot env file, and then inside of there, do spark post dot um, API dash key and then paste key. So paste your key here. Um, and then in the index.ts, go ahead and install .env and then import .env like this. And so now I have all that information. Um, and you could also just put it the, the API key as a string if you wanted to, um, but I'm gonna set up this way so um, I don't get uh, reveal my key. All right, so that's it for the setup. Oh, one other thing, in the .getignore, I added .env and I accidentally had um, temp in this for some reason so uh, this f um, folder was getting blocked or not uploaded so hopefully I didn't mess anything up um, now it'll be included because temp is just like um, this hello query alright so let's go ahead and send emails so we can close all this stuff and I think we just need to install stuff so here's the stuff that we need to install spark post so they have a nice um, SDK for node.js so we can use this. So we're gonna install spark post like so. And then we can look down here. We're gonna pass it our API key. I'm gonna be getting it from the environment file, but you could pass it as a string like this if you wanted to. And then we're just gonna send an email. So let's do yarn add spark post. And in my utils folder over here, I'm gonna create something called send email.ts. And usually you wanna do, you might wanna create a whole file for email because you're going to do uh, forget password, that sort of thing. I'm going to keep this simple and just have one um, because I don't want to do too much email sending, at least with this. All right, so I have send email here, and I also need to install the types for Spark Post. So Spark Post at types. And we can import it at the top here. And okay, it looks like it already, um, I didn't even realize this was a thing, but it looks like it'll automatically read spark post underscore API underscore key. So that's perfect. That's already what I have set. Um, but we could explicitly say process that env dot spark post API key if we wanted to. And I kind of like saying it explicitly here better um, because you wouldn't know how this library works otherwise. And let's go ahead and import spark post like that. All right, and uh, there we are. And let's see, the client. Okay, so we just haven't used it yet. So really what we need to pass to send email is the, um, I guess, the recipient. Recipient. And then the um, URL. And this URL is gonna be like basically the link. And both of these are strings. come over here we can just see they have the basic hello world for sending an email and we'll just copy this 
All right, and we can make this an asynchronous function. And we can get rid of all of that and just say const response is equal to await. And we can just console log that. And then if we get an error, it's going to just error out, and that's totally fine. So here's the recipient's address. So here we're just going to pass the recipient's. Well, I said S, but really there should just be one. And then here you'll notice we're building an HTML body. Um, we're fine keeping this testing at sparkpost.com, subject hello world. Um, I guess we can change the subject to confirm email. And then inner body here, I'm fine keeping this test stuff. But the most important thing is we need to add an anchor tag. So let's drop this to multiple lines so we can see what's going on. And yeah, so I guess right after this text, I will do add it. So we're gonna add an anchor tag with the href, and this is why we had created that um, that link function earlier, so we can uh, pass the link to an href um, that the user actually clicks on. Um, so we're gonna say confirm email, and then close the anchor tag, and that's it. So now we can test out this send email function and make sure it works. So inside our register resolver, I'm going to call it. So send email. Um, this, I guess, it's, yeah, there we go. So this is the URL. The recipient is gonna be um, email. So the, the email that the user passed in, we're gonna be using that as the recipient who we're gonna send it to, and then we're just passing in the link or the URL um, to send email. And let's await the response as well. Okay, so now we can test this out. And to test this out, we are just going to do um, to start up the server. And we're just going to come over here and actually send an email. And I'm gonna send the email to, let's refresh him. I'm gonna send the email to this account right here. I really like the service, it's called 10minuteemail.com. You can send to your own email if you want to, but I'm just gonna send it to this guy right here. And uh, basically you get an email for 10 minutes. So uh, it's nice for like spam email stuff too, if you wanna sign up for a service. Okay, so where do I wanna go? Localhost 4000. This will be the playground that I won't go to. So it looks like it's started up okay. And let's create a new tab here, and I'm going to say mutation, register, email, and the email I'm going to pass in is this guy right here, and password, and I'm going to put a bad password, which is the exact same thing, and I want to get the path and the message of any errors that occur. All right, so let's send this email. Um, Null value in column ID violates not null constraint. All right, so this is kind of interesting. Um, it looks like the ID is not getting created for some reason. Um, we're getting a query failure. I'm guessing it's having a problem with the automatically creating the UUID um, over here with the primary generated column. Um, let's fix this in a later video. What I want to do right now is just see if the email sending works. So I'm going to actually just create a UUID with it. So import um, version four from UUID. And we'll go ahead and create an ID for him. All right, we'll let this restart and we'll resend it. Another thing we need to be careful about is we're now sending email right here. So uh, unless we want to send an email for a test, uh, when we run tests, we might have like um, if process.env.nodeenv is not equal to test, right? Then we don't send an email. Okay. And all right, so we can just run the same command again. And I guess the server's still starting up. There we go. Okay, so we got register null, which means it should have sent correctly. If we come over here, it looks like um, total accepted recipients is one, so it should have sent it. So let's come back over here. Um, I haven't gotten anything yet, 
Uh, we'll see how long it takes to receive this. I'll just try refreshing. Um, we haven't got it yet. So I'll just pause the video and wait for it to come in. Okay, so it took only a few seconds later and it's already uh, popped through. We can click on this, we can see our um, little test email and I can click on confirm email if I want to. Um, and it takes us to localhost 4000 slash confirm and it does go ahead and say okay. So we're able to confirm uh, our email and that's pretty much the whole process of how it works. And uh, we can even do a little test. If I refresh, I should now say invalid because I've already confirmed it. So perfect. So that's it for this video, guys. We were able to take a um, Spark post and actually send an email using the link we created in a previous video. And uh, we were able to successfully, con oops, successfully confirm our account. And then uh, what we'll do next video is start the login process and then also fix um, this ID. We shouldn't have to specify version four here um, because we have a primary generated UUID here. I think I believe I know the problem. We have to add an extension to Postgres, but we'll talk about more about this uh, in the next video.